Of course, this controversy generates even more heat because Indiana Governor Mike Pence is a possible candidate for the GOP presidential nod. I want to bring in former HP chair and CEO Carly Fiorina for her reaction. She's currently working with a company called Good360, a nonprofit giving away essential goods for everyday survival to those who need it globally. Carly, a former CEO of Hewlett Packard, a huge company. Uh, welcome to the program. And uh, we, Thanks, we mention all of this, Carly, because we know because you just told us you're 90 percent certain to be somebody who's running for president next year as well. Uh, so what's your position on Indiana's religious freedom bill? Well, you know, I think, unfortunately, this is an example of everything that's wrong with politics. Uh, the bill, as Mary Thompson correctly pointed out, uh, is based on the national bill that Bill Clinton signed. This is not about protecting discrimination. It's about protecting religious liberty. So in fact, it was this law that was used by, you may recall, the Muslim prisoner who wanted to grow a beard in prison. Right. And he took that case all the way to the Supreme Court in, and won because basically what this law says is that someone can have a remedy against the federal government for imposing on their religious beliefs. So I think everybody needs to sort of uh, step back and cool off here and look at the facts on both sides. And Carly, as former CEO of Hewlett Packard, it's the tech community, a lot of big names there who've really come out strongly, vehemently against this. Uh, are you surprised at the high profile activism, if you will, these positions? I mean, Mark Benioff practically threatened to pull his business, Salesforce's business, out of the state of Indiana. Are you surprised by that? Well, look, I think it's incumbent upon every CEO to take advantage of all the talent that's out there. And so it's not in any company, or particularly a technology company's interest to discriminate in any way. And that's not what this law does. This law doesn't condone discrimination. So I guess what I wish is that everyone would cool off and look at the facts before they jump onto Twitter and uh, condemn something that clearly there's a huge amount of misunderstanding about. And Carly, these kinds of questions for you are going to be uh, part of the months ahead. Nine percent sure that you're running for president. What's the 10 percent holding you back? Well, I, like anyone else uh, potentially running, and as you pointed out in your opening, there's only one officially declared candidate at this point. Uh, I am continuing to go through a process of assessing support and building a team. Uh, but I'm looking forward to making that final decision uh, and a final announcement, as I think I've said on a number of occasions, sort of late April, early May. In the meantime, I'm really excited about uh, announcing today with Good360 uh, our latest technology platform. This is a great company that I did with when I was at Hewlett Packard. We take excess or obsolete inventory from all manner of companies, and instead of that going to a landfill, uh, seven million pounds goes into landfills every uh, year. We allow, we connect through the power of technology, 45,000 charities in this country and around the world to those goods. And today we're announcing a um, improvement to that technology platform that basically allows charities to go up and lay out what we call wish lists, things they really need so that we can connect them very specifically to donor companies and, and so donors can see where their money right. and their goods are going to good Briefly, use. Car yeah, I was just going to ask how can individuals get involved with this yes, as well? Absolutely. Listen, I'm desperately trying to clear out some old books, some old clothes, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, well, then, generally we focus on uh, new inventory or barely used inventory, but please, everyone should check it out. It's good360.org. If I may, let me just tell a very brief story. I was recently in Delaware uh, with a wonderful organization called Exceptional Care for Children. This is an organization that treats very severely ill or physically uh, challenged children. Many of them are on end-of-life programs. And this little girl wanted a ballet lesson. She was too ill to leave the center. And so thanks to the generosity of one of our donors, this center was able to build her a ballet studio in the hospital, basically, so that she could take ballet lessons every week. And there are literally yeah. hundreds of thousands thank of stories like that. And thank you for sharing that and, and for the work that you mentioned. Uh, I want to ask you as well about something, uh, the Ellen Powell verdict, this, the win for Kleiner Perkins, basically a win that's reverberating around uh, the venture capital community, the technology community. Uh, what's the real lesson here from this verdict from your point of view? Well.
The jury uh, decided unanimously that there wasn't a uh, situation of harassment or discrimination here. And yet it is clearly also true, as many tech CEOs have acknowledged, that the technology industry is still not taking full advantage of all the talent that's out there. Women represent half the talent of this nation and of this world. So when technology companies aren't taking advantage of all that talent, they're shortchanging themselves. It's just interesting, again, to go back to what's happening in Indiana. I mean, we're talking ultimately about access to the widest pool of talent, an issue that is keeping these companies. I mean, it almost sounds like you're on both sides of it. On, on the one hand, you know, defending what's happened in this case, and on the other hand, trying to defend Indiana and some of the other religious freedom statutes that exist out there at the moment as well. Well, I think if we take uh, the facts away from the emotion of this case, I think every single one of us would agree to two principles. One, discrimination is wrong. We need all the talent we can get. And two, protecting religious liberty is at the core of this nation. Mm. And so, of course, we need to protect religious liberty, and that's why everyone agreed that this Muslim prisoner should be able to grow a beard. So mm -hmm. I think sometimes we spend so much of our time in politics talking in very highly emotional, vitriolic terms, and we need to settle down and talk on the basis of common sense and principles, where I think there is a much greater opportunity to find common ground. It's one of the reasons why I think so many Americans frankly, are sick of politics as usual, and would just like to have a conversation about the pressing issues that face this nation, and there are indeed many. And Carly, we suspect you'll be in the mix for that conversation. Thank you so much for